The Hedgeless Horseman here. It's April 9, 2022. I thought I'd make a video about my view or how I think about potential turnaround cases. Uh, someone asked me in the YouTube comments uh, about pure gold mining. And, uh, you know, I, I thought it was a, uh, a good idea to make a video uh, because I think there are uh, several concepts that are in play with uh, turnaround cases and uh, why sometimes it's you know let's say deceptive for a value investor uh, or a contrarian etc because i mean personally i kind of get interested when i see a you know crashing share price and uh, uh, lower valuation because obviously all else equal uh, a low valuation i mean that that in typically increases you know potential to the upside uh, but there are very big differences of course uh, uh, you know you can have let's say you have five identical shorts five identical shorts like this but the companies can be completely different and the opportunities can be completely different uh, but uh, like the instinct or impulse, uh, let's say for a contrarian or a value investor, it's at least for me, it's when I see a crashing share price. I mean, I start to get greedy just, just you know, uh, by looking at, uh, you know, OK, it's fallen this much. It used to be up here. I mean, if it just, you know, goes back to the 52 week highs, etc. I mean, I, I again, I immediately get interested. Uh, Almost regardless uh, what the stock is uh, when I see a crash. And that's, I mean, I, I think that is a good impulse to have because that means you're, you're really, uh, you know, you understand that, you know, price is what you pay, value is what you get. The obvious thing to keep in mind is that uh, the value portion and not just the price that, okay, if you buy every crashing stock, basically that's down 70, 80%. I mean, if we look at juniors overall, I think that's actually the case. And I think a lot of, or, uh, a lot of them are actually incredibly cheap because value has not gone down 70%, but price has. But then you have these stories where price has crashed, but value has also crashed. So obviously that's not the same case. I mean, if, the, if this, for example, was a, your average junior, let's say, let's say the value trend has been something like this. Okay, so it actually uh, was overvalued here and now incredibly undervalued here. Because, okay, the, you know, the, uh, the news releases have been at positive, not the, you know, fastest grower, but, you know, it, it, it's, the value has certainly not crashed. But in the case of, you know, a, store like pure gold for example obviously the their mine in red lake has been underperforming severely what does that mean that means that it's uh, you know shown to be a lot worse than uh, on paper than what is expected so maybe actually you know uh, let's say risk adjusted value because with a turnaround case obviously i mean in in two years this might be a completely different mine but, but we don't know the future, so we can only obviously make a guesstimation of what we think the risk adjusted value is right now. You know, uh, trying to guess all future possible scenarios and the probabilities of that and, and have some kind of uh, net present value, let's say. But let's say the value has uh, uh, performed or evolved like this. Uh, obviously, that's a big difference in uh, opportunity, let's say. I mean, this would still be a multi-bagger if it went up here, but if the actual case was pretty much intact, uh, but the value, yeah, and the value was up here, I mean, obviously, that's a, you know, multiples better opportunity than a price crashing with fundamentals. So in the case of pure gold, for example, without knowing too much about the company, so I'm just making some, you know, airing some concepts I think are very important to keep in mind, uh, especially for value investors, uh, is that 
we are after the price to value gap. So we're not only after a price to price gap, previous price, uh, current price versus previous price. Uh, so in this case at 122 million, I don't know what the actual, you know, uh, net present value on paper was for pure gold mining. Uh, but le let's say, let's say, I mean, if we look forward a bit here, okay, what are we buying? We're buying an underperforming mine. And I think that's pretty much it. Of course, they have, you know, exploration potential beyond that. Uh, so, so that's, that's a, you know, given, but, but it's, as I see it, if, you know, <laughs> with the limit of my knowledge of the company, I, I'm seeing it as pretty much buying a turnaround mine and, and, uh, you know, not too much other than that, except the typical exploration potential any mine has, let's say, and it's a, you know, great jurisdiction and all that. Uh, but but if if pure gold mining went back to you know turned around the mine into you know somewhat profitable a uh, somewhat profitable operation, I don't know what the that would be worth. Uh, but if you account for the fact that I think they said something about needing forty million or fifty million, they need to raise that soon. So this is a company you know going uh, you know really risking bankruptcy. So the risk is real. Risk is imminent. I mean, they, they, if they don't do that, maybe they go bankrupt very shortly. So there's a, a relatively high likelihood of actually going bankrupt. And that's what's hard about stories, you know, where uh, the rubber meets, uh, hits the road. I mean, an exploration story, they can just stop exploring. And the potential is still there, etc. And, and the potential is very esoteric. So, so that's why they're all, you know, uh, volatile, etc. But uh, in, in a case like this, I mean, you can't ignore. Re I mean, reality is the reality when the rubber hits the road. So, so in this case, it's like there is a very, uh, compared to most juniors, uh, there's a very high likelihood or relatively a lot higher likelihood of this actually going bankrupt, going to absolutely zero. At the same time, what's the upside case? Let's say they do turn around the mine. They would probably need to raise, you know, let's say 40, 50 million. I mean, that's obviously pretty heavy dilution, uh, you know, in, in light of the current uh, market cap here. You know, assuming they don't do that with debt or uh, something like that, but I would be uh, pretty surprised if they could raise, uh, you know, uh, that amount of debt given the state of the company. But so, so this is basically a, a bit as I mean, th this isn't really real. I mean, that's not, uh, I think, the real opportunity because they, they would probably need to dilute in order for it to even reach a possible uh, positive scenario in the future so let's say you know the the upside is or let's say the the forward looking or in hindsight looking might be a better word post dilution market cap today is like 200 million etc okay let, let's say yeah let's say 200 million and I don't, again i don't know what the what it would be worth if they go back to steady state and you know at least uh, come into some positive cash flow but but i don't see too much in terms of uh, upside potential especially when you compare it to some other companies because the 200 million i mean if it goes to 600 million um, that's obviously 200 percent upside and that's nice and all but it's like how likely is it how easy is it and what are the risks so personally, I'm staying away from pure gold mining. I'm, you know, uh, I, I, for, uh, and at the same time, it's like your circle of competence. I'm not a miner. I mean, I think exploration is hard enough and geology, etc. But to, for me to try to figure out what the, uh, what the problems, what the, what the true potential and the probabilities of this turning around, I mean, that's almost impossible for me. So I think again, like, you know, Warren Buffett says, like, stick to your circle of competence. I mean, I'm gonna, uh, uh, obviously, by extension, I would miss all turnaround cases like this. 
But that's okay. I mean, I, I'm gonna miss 99% of 10 baggers anyway. I guess the, the moral of the story of what I'm trying to say is that, uh, you know, keep in mind the price value gap as a value investor and just don't look at price because it's easy, obviously, to get uh, for a contrarian to get greedy in this situation. But in this situation, as I see it with the limited knowledge I have of pure gold mining, I don't see a really compelling risk reward. But even if the risk reward was decent, let's say, I could name you know, 50 juniors out there without this kind of risk and with pretty much higher upside. And that's obviously, it's like the opportunity cost of any stock is obviously any other stock at that moment in time. So even if this was a decent risk reward, let's say, I think there are, you know, better cases out there because I think there are a bunch of juniors that have actually increased their value and had almost uh, the same price development. So you have a price to value gap that's like this instead of what it po possibly is for uh, pure gold mining. And in these situations, you probably are not even, you know, risking anywhere close to the company going bankrupt. So the, the risk portion, which is uh, more important, actually, from a long term compounding perspective, is actually more, uh, uh, you know, has a, should have a much higher weight than the upside potential, because you can't compound a loss. I mean, even if you, I wouldn't say be the shittiest investor ever, but it's like, even if you compound at 5% per year, that's going to beat the, uh, you know, uh, uh, not being able to compound at all. Uh, so I, I simply think I'm staying away from it. Uh, this might turn into a multi-bagger. I have no idea. And of course, like I keep on saying, the result, the future result doesn't necessarily say much about the uh, actual opportunity. Because we don't know the future. Maybe this, maybe pure gold is one of the shittiest opportunities out there. But that can still uh, become a multi-bagger. I have no idea. But I don't think if I play a hand like pure gold mining again and again and again, uh, I I don't think I'll be outperforming an index. I don't th I don't think the opportunity is that great and. Even if it is good, I think there are better. Let's just put it like that. So to me, uh, this is not a good opportunity. To me, the re I don't see the risk reward here. Uh, another case like Fortuna Silver. Again, I haven't followed closely uh, this story either, but I've seen some, you know, uh, headlines. Uh, in the past months and I might be completely off and that's not the point I'm trying to you know talk about the concept of price to value gap here I mean from what I can gather they've had problems with uh, local communities etc that uh, you know uh, I think their mine got its permit retracted or something like that uh, so so there's been stuff that would explain you know a, a, a drop in value and a drop in price but maybe who knows maybe things have turned around and price has gone back to or value has gone back to here and there is actually an opportunity i'm not 100 percent sure but given uh the, what i've read etc i just don't see it as a no-brainer opportunity just because it's uh, at you know close to 52 week lows that's what I'm saying. It's like if the if if again the uh, value is actually up here or, or up here right now, or it went something like let let's say it went something like this, and, and some positive change happened and sentiment hasn't kept up. Yes, then the value gap is here. But but if the value is down here, for example, I mean, then that's not the best opportunity. I can find out there for sure. I mean, th then it's, you know, 50% upside. Again, I'm not, I, what I'm, you know, 
just to reiterate, I haven't followed this story that closely. I'm just trying to hammer in the point that always be aware of the, what has happened to the value as well. Because I know there's a tendency for contrarians and value hunters, etc. That I, I, like me, I, you know, instinctively get interested when I see price, uh, you know, crashing, let's say. But one has to be aware of the, that this might be, you know, a so-called value trap, pretty much. That yes, price has actually crashed, but like the fundamentals uh, are down that much or risks are up that much that the risk adjusted, you know, net present value has actually gone down quite a bit. So, so the opportunity is a lot less than meets the eye just looking at price relative to past price. Uh, same with Gato Silver, uh, 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 which, you know, basically oscillated in a range. And then they we found out or they uh, basically announced that uh, uh, a big decrease in their resources. So basically gold uh, that was theorized to be there, uh, gold on the books, gold in the ground appears not to be as... Uh, as much I think they wrote down the resources or reserves or whatever it was by like 53% so that's an obvious uh, you know crash in intrinsic value I mean the ounces might still be there etc it's just that based on the current knowledge we have yes the the intrinsic risk adjusted uh, net present value went down so uh, and the price went down as well and i i don't think i think they're a profitable producer etc so uh, and i don't think they're you know ris risking bankruptcy or anything like that um so i don't th see the risks on the short term being as high as pure gold mining for example and um, I don't think they, you know, might need to dilute anything. So it's not, it's not like in the pure gold mining's case that in an upside case you can't use the current market cap because that's going to be diluted heavily. Uh, so every situation is unique, and again, it's like mining overall is not my area of expertise because anyone can read a balance sheet well kinda i mean anyone can reach uh, read a cash flow statement i mean just look at novo resource which will uh, come to soon uh that's i'm not trying to i don't I, let's say i don't think the opportunity the big opportunity is not to be able to read a financial statement better than anyone else I, I just don't see it because that's like the easiest thing or most apparent thing for people to see. I mean, if it is a P6 company, I mean, that will scream sheep to most people. But uh, uh, exploration story, for example, you know, where there's no PE and, and, you know, the market doesn't get it at all. I mean, that might be trading at a PE of, you know, two or whatever, but nobody is aware. So I think that's where, again, it's like the opportunity is the biggest where the market is the most irrational or uh, have the hardest time putting things together and, you know, estimating a risk adjusted, uh, risk adjusted value, etc. So again, in the case of NOAA, I mean, you, you can see a trend here again. It's like, this is why obviously mining is very hard and I'm not too uh, keen on developers or uh, miners, etc. Because there's a million things that can go wrong that I don't know about. There's a million unknown unknowns because I am not a miner. And especially if, you know, if, if you have a... Again, if, if if you have a pretty, you know, muted upside scenario and you have, you know, all the risks of mining, so then you have a risk profile you don't even understand, whereas the, you know, upside potential might be quite limited. So that just boils down to I'm taking too much risk for too little upside. So th that's why I'm not keen on mature miners or slow growers, etc. Whereas in an exploration case, for example, 
they might grow their value tremendously in just two years. They might multi, you know, multiply the intrinsic value in, in two field seasons, for example. And at the same time, yes, it's obviously a risk that they might miss, but there's no, uh, typically, depending on the story, if, if it is a discovery already, you don't have this you know, rubber meets the road scenario where you, you have a lot of debt and you have to be profitable, otherwise you go bankrupt. Uh, that doesn't mean the price can't go down a lot because we see how volatile the explorers are. But, but that's a different kind of risk. That's more volatility. And until a case is like, uh, you know, totally over, let's say, I mean, if they've drilled and there's nothing more, or this is 100% not a mine, there's always potential. And potential uh, typically, I mean, potential has some value and it gets valued. Whereas in pure gold mining, I mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, they need money. Otherwise, the, you know, the story is probably over. You can't just wait for sentiment to return in that case. Whereas in a, a junior explorer, for example, you typically can just wait. I mean, they can, let's say, close up shop in a sense that they stop exploring, wait it out, and it will at least come back at next sentiment high. But we might have a sentiment high here and pure gold mining might, might not be in, uh, even around in its current form. So that then you have a... Uh, you know, problem with even if you write on the sentiment in the sector, uh, you might be a part of it if you're in pure gold mining. So that that's another form of risk, and that's why I actually like uh, exploration companies, etc., because the they don't have that kind of you know, uh, you know, real <laughs> real risk in a sense. I mean, if they drill, the the risk is yeah they might miss. But if it's a good store, they'll probably be able to get capital and keep on drilling, etc. And, and the story won't be, quote, over uh, until they stop growing. If that's years from now or soon, uh, you know, that depends on the case. But for pure gold, the story might be over regardless of, you know, the expiration potential uh, very shortly. And in uh, Novo's... Uh, Example, which I mean, I've stated before, I, I, I'm not bullish on Novo because of the Beaton's Creek deposit. And I've never pretended to, you know, you know, have known what's, let's say, uh, how to fix the problems at uh, the BC deposit or or what the actual uh, value of uh, BC is right now. But unlike most other stories here, the, the, the big thing with know is that they have one of the, you know, largest exploration portfolios of any junior. So it's not like in pure gold, you know, if, 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 if Noah was only about Beaton's Creek, the Beaton's Creek operation, I wouldn't touch Novo. That's not a compelling risk reward to me. But if, uh, no terms around BC, you know, and, and that might include BC deposit itself, or it brings in, you know, or from a satellite deposits like Genie or Parnell Vulture or, or some other mosqui Mosquito Creek prospects, you know, uh, Millennium Minerals prospects, etc. Then you have a mine and the whole, you know, Blue Sky portfolio, which is the case, in my opinion, from the get go. So that's a much more compelling because the, the, the upside potential in Novo is multiples, in my opinion, compared to the exploration potential of Gato Silver, Fortuna Silver and Pure Gold Mining. So the, these are all kind of turnaround cases in the sense that they have uh, operating mines that have uh, underperformed or there's been some legal issues, etc. But none come even close to the upside potential of Novo. And if we're looking at downside risk, pure gold has the highest because they actually, you know, need to raise money soon, otherwise they go bankrupt. Fortuna Silver, I'm, I, I don't know this company enough, but I assume they have, uh, yeah, I shouldn't probably say anything even because I, I have no idea of the current situation. Uh, but keep in mind if you, you know, own fortune I keep in mind the, the downside risk and, and Gato Silver I mean they're, they're very profitable as far as I understand 
their problem is that they you know need to find more ore to this profitable uh, business etc so they have a problem with you know uh, they ne they need to let's say do a lot of stuff to increase the value from here because they just you know ba basically on paper they just lost a lot of ounces so they need to refine them or you know replace them and then go higher um, whereas uh, no for example they have almost their entire expiration portfolio is uh, not discounted and they have you know more targets than most juniors and thankfully their equity position is huge i mean if again if no if if nova was just beaten creek and didn't have an equity position there's no way i would own the stock if Novo had the equity position and only Beaton's Creek, I don't think the risk reward would be that great. But given that they have like 140 million in equity positions and you get all the, you, you get one of the largest uh, exploration portfolios around, and you have a mill with like, there are ways to turn this around especially you know and they have you know might have time to actually do that whereas pure gold might not even have time because they don't have any uh, uh they don't have any you know a piggy bank for example to allow them to reach a, a, a steady state even if even if it's possible so when you combined uh, combined beaton's creek turnaround with the 140 million or so in equities plus the uh, you know let's say absurd upside potential that's why I, you know love novo that's why i love the risk reward in novo without there ever uh, being any guarantees and the, the same goes for any of these stocks i mean there's there are no guarantees but in terms of upside potential i think novo blows them all away uh in terms of you know turnaround for for the current operation uh no was certainly a lot better off than pure gold mining and you know uh, latest production figures of q1 for example it showed an improvement so who knows M maybe we are close to a turnaround i don't know i just think that the equity position upside potential relative to the risk uh you know from the beans creek uh operation while accounting for the 140 million in equities i think it's lower than the perception and therefore uh i think it's you know unfairly punished in a sense that if you if you account also for the immense upside i, I th just think it's i just think it's super cheap so either like uh, with any other story i mean either i'm gonna lose money on novo but I also think there's a pretty good possibility that I will make a lot of money in Novo from this price. Because compared to, uh, let's say, pure gold, where, where fundamentals have gone like this, maybe actually, I mean, risk-adjusted fundamentals. Obviously, it took a, uh, Novo took a big hit when uh, uh, we learned that uh, you couldn't drill the conglomerates. And there was no fine gold except for the halos in the Commonwealth conglomerate. So that was a decrease in value for sure. Uh, but a lot of stuff, stuff has happened since then. And they have, you know, a, a mill that's probably worth, I don't know, around 200 million. And there's, you know, prospects to go around of potentially filling that. So maybe uh, implied value has gone something like, you know, I don't know, this or whatever. And... Uh, and maybe we don't know what's going to happen, but let's say Malmsbury hits and, and, you know, that gets hiked up and it continues to be like this. Or, or they actually drill and hit something at Hemai and it, you know, jumps a lot. Okay, uh, um, um, I might be, uh, you know, might have uh, too high levels here. But, you, you know, you know I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's like Noah has a bunch of... Uh, ventures in place you know <laughs> exploration activities and at any point in time i mean there, there could be again uh, you, you have the let's say you have the turnaround you have the you know uh, let's say that you get 
or sorting uh, positive or sorting results you know they, they they are able to find more gene or vulture or whatever it's like there's a pow I wouldn't say powder keg but there's several potential upside surprises in Novo and I can't say the same for like again pure gold mining the upside surprise is basically a turnaround that's it that's what you're hoping for if we hit a hemi for example just an example I mean you could close down Beedens Creek because that would be good enough I mean the gray is you know 1.8 billion for example so there's a bunch of stuff that uh, Coupled with the equity position, etc., that makes the risk reward in Novo totally different, in my opinion, than Gato, Silver, Fortuna, Silver, and Pure Gold Mining. Uh, of course, uh, the opportunity relies on the fact that uh, almost nobody agrees with me. Because if, if people agreed with me, Novo wouldn't be here. Let's say Novo would be at least up here, you know, at, uh, let's say, you know, $3.77. In that case, obviously, you know, I wouldn't be as bullish on the risk reward because the, the price would be, you know, two, three hundred percent higher. So whereas people can't can't understand, um, you know, uh, how, you know, how can you say the risk reward? I mean, it just it's not that hard. It's it's price compared to the potential and price has gone down way more than the potential has gone down. This is not rocket science. It's not that I can guarantee anything. It's just that if I made, you know, a hundred similar bets like no resources, given the risk profile and upside potential, I think in the long term, I would make money on that. Whereas uh, pure gold, I, I'm not sure I would. At least I would make a lot more in, you know, playing a hundred cases like this, hundred hands like this. Uh, that, that's just my two cents, obviously. And uh, you absolutely don't have to agree with me. Uh, you should always do what you feel comfortable with. If again, if you don't see the case, you don't have the conviction. You're gonna make the, you're gonna make mistakes in the future anyway, because you will have no idea what actually happens to value, etc. So you're gonna be looking at price and and assume that's you know reflecting value all the time. Uh, so if you don't see a case, you should never be invested in a case. Uh, because again, you're setting yourself up for failure, and and it's okay to miss a bunch of opportunities. Again, I'm, I'm, you know, pure gold might turn around. Fortune might be a multibagger. Gatos might be a multibagger. I just personally don't think the risk rewards in those cases, based on the limited knowledge I have, is that you know superior relative to like you know 50 or 100 other juniors I like. Uh, that's simply it. And I I personally think. Uh, again, based on limited knowledge about the other companies, I think you know the risk reward in Novo blows away the risk reward in all these other uh, companies, uh, primarily because uh, the the immense expiration potential in in Novo and sorting uh, and all that. But consider me biased. You know, I own shares of uh, Novo Resources. It's also a banner sponsor, uh, so it you know. Uh, uh, I'm probably biased, so like if if uh, what I say doesn't make sense, you know, <laughs> might come from bias. Uh, and always make up your own mind. Uh, thanks for listening.